appreciate you coming in and uh, spending the morning with us. Uh, I'm Rick Trombetta with Great Lakes. It's Bill Santucci, Great Lakes. Um, we kind of would prefer this to be a round table. Um, so please, on any comments, questions, let us know. Or uh, what this title is, is the best practices in a data center. The reason we're presenting that is, is input from you people. Uh, things that we hear when we're out about data centers is what we're presenting back to you. So these aren't necessarily Great Lakes or our ideas. They're best practices that we've seen in the data center. So uh, with that said, I'm going to let Bill start. Oh, you want me to work too? Yes, exactly. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Uh, well, kind of just what we want to go through uh, as far as the open closures and our expertise and our experience is uh, dealing with data center closures, anything that holds uh, computer equipment. And like as Rick said, uh, we'll have kind of data center closures, so best practices. And really what that is is try to help. How does uh, enclosure efficiency, and really what does that mean with inside your data center? Sorry about that. No problem. Good morning. We are running late ourselves. Yeah. So really within the enclosure efficiency is really how does the enclosure help or hurt your data center? You know, and either you know, structural integrity, holding their equipment, cable management, uh, and even the white real estate space. You know, how tall is it? How does it work? Well, you know, so it doesn't interfere with anything. So uh, just going through some uh, common numbers here, 65% uh, of data center power usage is consumed by cooling systems. It's coming from Intel, so that's a lot of power uh, for the, the chilling system. 70% of that available cooling is wasted due to bypass airflow. And that's an approximation, that's the, from Uptime Institute. Uh, and just to throw some numbers out as to what that, you know, relates to dollar value is a uh, 20 ton air conditioner is approximately $200,000, $250 uh, investment. Uh, 5 kW rack is uh, 50 BTUs, 1.42 tons of cooling at 100% effectiveness. And just kind of throwing some numbers out, but 70% if 70% of that is wasted due to Intel, uh, you know, that's you know, almost one ton of cooling not getting to the equipment, it's being bypassed. And uh, I'm trying to just relate that to a dollar value just to show you know, utility cost, what that relates to. It's about $10,000 of that investment is being kind of wasted, wasted if it was just purchased as an item that way. So kind of just throwing some numbers out just to you know, relate that efficiencies is important as far as cooling. Uh, efficient cable management will aid in your cooling, you know, in your exhaust flow. Managing the rear of the cabinet is just as important as the front of the cabinet. Uh, getting that exhaust flow and creating, making sure that's open and to get, get that out of the cabinet. Okay. Uh, preventing the bypass airflow. That's what this is one of the main easiest parts of it. Uh, preventing a bypass airflow has a severe negative impact on uh, equipment and facility efficiency. Obviously, 70% of that is uh, available point to pool. Computer room is wasted. Repeating that one. Reduction of the bypass airflow is the most cost effective, quickest, and typically the easiest way to increase efficiency. That's, I don't know how, how I can stress that more, is that very common sense applications will yield your biggest increase initially for efficiency and dropping your cooling costs. Uh, performing a simple walkthrough of the data center with possible leaks from damaged floor tiles and probably sealed cable access cutouts. That's the easiest one. I don't know how many places there. Once a tile, you know, that they have a great data center, but there's holes all over the place. Uh, perf tiles in the wrong area, some are in the hot aisle, some are just in the unused space where the cabinets have no uh, population there for future growth, but there's still perf tiles over there. For, uh, so just very simple common sense things. Uh, poorly sealed gaps in the doors and the walls. Uh, these issues can be remedied quickly and can yield significant results in the overall performance, uh, reducing the load on the crack units. And that's really what this whole thing is, just trying to figure out what's the best method for your data center. Everyone is different. Uh, as much as everyone wants to think that there's a simple standard across the board, there isn't. Every data center is different. That's the one thing we would stress. So we really try to, you know, as Rick said, make this a round table feedback and asking questions from you guys is where we gain our most uh, experience. Okay, um, as Bill said, 70% of the cold air in the data center is wasted, it's bypassed. I always just think that number is amazing. Um, so okay, what do we do to capture some of this cold air that's going around your equipment? 
obviously filler panels in the enclosure. Okay, so we have cold air going from the cold aisle going through the back of the enclosure. So the air is moving this way. It's going around the cabinet, around the uh, equipment, and going through the openings where there is no equipment. All that cold air is just simply being wasted. So obviously, uh, blanking panels are huge to plug up the gaps. The other thing is the raised floor cable access grommets. You see a picture of it there, cold blocking people like that. We have a statistic, nine eight by eight inch, which isn't very big, floor uh, openings in your floor equals one floor tile which is pretty, I mean, you know when a floor tile is left open, how much cold air rushes out. Okay, the other thing that we do um, is this is a brush grommet on the side, particularly when the enclosures get wider. The networking enclosures that have servers in them, you'll get 30 inches wide and even wider. All the cold air, we've managed to keep it in the front with blanking panels, but what about the sides? So here's a brush grommet kit. So now what we've done is contained that cold air in the front and forcing it through the servers as opposed to all the air leaks that cabinets and enclosures can create. Okay, the next question would be enclosure size and what kind of cabinet, what size enclosure do I need? This is very, very difficult. There is no standard where it says, I need a server cabinet, I need a network cabinet. I'm sure probably some of you have servers in an enclosure along with networking and patch panels and things like that. If it was purely servers, we would know that cable management would be in the back. If it was networking involved, then we know we need to put cable management in the front. So those are some of the things that uh, are considerations that we need to determine. Um, I'm going to go with the first one that probably most of you mix them up and put networking equipment in with your servers. Is that a fair assumption? And that's, that seems to be common. It reduces some of the runs. Some people do a home run cabinet where they'll put a big wide cabinet in a row of 10 and then everything feeds off of it and back into that. Well, that, that works good too, but most of you we have seen have done a combination of both. In that case, we would recommend an enclosure a little wider, probably at least 30 inches wide. So then you would need that brush barometer, a way to seal up the sides. Vertical space, um, usually about 90%, 85% of the enclosure is filled. That's the fill rate most people go by. If we, if you buy a 44U cabinet, generally 44U space is not considered usable. Uh, most people put in what they need for cable management and other parts, so we're generally going about 85 to 90% of the cabinet. The third one here is really important power usage and PDU mounting requirements. I don't know if we have any Eaton or other people in here. Um, some of the PDUs are huge, and the intelligent ones have boxes on the bottom. And if you got not careful, they impede into your mounting of the back of the enclosure. So that needs to be considered too. So take a look at the PDU. If it's a 77 inch tall PDU, you're gonna have a real hard time with a 78 inch cabinet because you do have uh, the lost top and bottom. So PDU is probably the biggest mistake we see where our cabinets go out and people are screaming at us that the PDU won't fit. Well, a little math there would help. Um, okay, rail and adjustability. This is really more common sense. Certainly, we just spoke about that networking equipment and servers go into the same enclosure. Okay, servers, I could probably pull my rails to the front networking, I need to push them back because I may have angled patch panels in the front, which would take up about six inches. So you want to be able to move your rails fairly easily in an enclosure. Uh, that's certainly a main consideration. 